Reporting. New reporting overnight concerning the president and Ukraine. Three senior administration officials tell The Washington Post that the president ordered his acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, to hold back nearly $400 million in military aid to that country just days before the call in which Trump reportedly pressured Ukraine's president to investigate Joe Biden. That reporting has since been matched by The New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. According to the Post, administration officials were instructed to tell lawmakers that the delays were part of an interagency process, but to give them no additional information, a pattern that continued for nearly two months until the White House released the funds on the night of September 11th. Congress is now investigating if the president froze the military aid as a way to pressure Ukraine to dig up dirt on a political rival. While the president denies that direct connection, he did connect the funding to corruption and then corruption to Joe Biden. Did you tell the Ukrainian leader that they would have the aid only if they investigated Joe Biden and his family? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I did not ask for, uh, did, I did not make a statement that you have to do this or I'm not going to give you aid. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. We're supporting a country. We want to make sure that country is honest. It's very important to talk about corruption. If you don't talk about corruption, why would you give money to a country that you think is, is corrupt? There was no pressure put on them whatsoever. I put no pressure on them whatsoever. I could have. I think it would probably, possibly have been okay if I did. But I didn't. I didn't put any pressure on them whatsoever. You know why? Because they want to do the right thing, and they know about corruption, and they probably know that Joe Biden and his son are corrupt. Now, when you see the call, if you see it, I hope you see it, frankly. Sir, you can release, you can authorize the release of the transcript. Will you do that, I can sir? do it very easily, but I'd rather not do it from the standpoint of uh, all of the other conversations I have. I may do it because it was a very innocent call. I hope you get to see it, and I hope you get to see it soon. On the whistleblower, you say you want the transcript of the call released. Do you also want the I didn't the say that at all. Do you I didn't also say that at all. Complaint? It may get released. I didn't say that at all. I don't think it's a great precedent to be releasing calls with foreign countries, heads of foreign countries. You know, it, it, Willie, again, here you have the president of the United States doing what he does. You have Rudy Giuliani, who's done the same thing. It's by now, it's their M.O. where they go out and admit it. Yep. They just admit it in the light of day. This would be like somebody admitting, yes, I robbed the bank. Of course I robbed the bank. Uh, but, but you really need to focus on the bank president. Those interest rates were predatory. They were 3% above prime. I mean, look at, and that's exactly what's happening here. The president has admitted. So let's just full stop. Yeah. The president of the United States has admitted that while military aid that was meant to protect that country against Vladimir Putin's further invasion, the president of the United States held up that money and at the same time eight times pressured the president of Ukraine to dig up opposition research for his personal lawyer. Work with my personal lawyer. Again, there's no official capacity to this. This is his personal lawyer going to Ukraine to try to dig up dirt on his political opponent in the United States. That, in and of itself, is extraordinary and would be viewed by any Congress. Uh, that had oversight responsibilities over the previous 44 presidents, that would be viewed as impeachable per se. That, just that fact pattern right now. But now you have the president, wow. of course, debating whether he held up arm cells over it, said he didn't, but then, of course, he went on to say, I could have. Yeah. I could have held it up for that if I wanted to. So here you have, once again, the bank robber, admitting that he did exactly what the world now knows he did. And again, Break it, the law. as the Washington Post and New York Times reported late last night, 
the administration held up $391 million of aid in the days before this call to Ukraine. So if it wasn't for that kind of a quid pro quo, why did you suddenly decide, Mr. President, the question might be asked today at the U.N. to hold up that aid in the couple of days before you made that call? Carol, we heard the president yesterday going back and forth saying, quote, I hope you get to see it soon, talking about the transcript, mm -hmm. and in the next breath saying it sets a bad precedent, you can't see the transcript, going back and forth on that. Also a little rich that he's suddenly very concerned about yeah. corruption right. uh, just in the case of Ukraine here. Yeah, on the transcript question, you know, this is, we've seen this from him before. We saw it with, you know, will you sit down for Mueller for an interview? Yes, I will. No, I won't. Right. You know, will you, should Mueller testify? Yes, he should. No, he shouldn't. You know, he's, he's all over the map on this. There is real debate in the administration about whether or not to release the transcript specifically because of there are people in the administration who think that you shouldn't set a precedent. If you release this transcript, you know, then when other things happen down the road, will you be pressured to release other transcripts? That aside, that's not going to be enough for Congress. Uh, they want the whistleblower report. Right. Um, and so even if he does release a transcript, it's not going to go away. This is something that's going to continue. And, you know, the president seems to, he's really digging in. You're absolutely right that he, he's got this, you know, again, once again, we've seen, we're seeing him say, you know, if I, if this, there was, I did nothing wrong, but here's what I did. And we, with this, we saw this, the earliest version of this in the administration was with Michael Flynn. If you remember, he said, you know, oh, you know, he, it, even if he did have talk sanctions with the Russians, that, there was nothing wrong with that. It's just hiding everything in plain sight. And so he's re, he's putting forward his very typical playbook and yet it, when you talk to people in Congress and you see that what's coming out of the, the, from the Democrats, it just doesn't look like it's going to be enough this time. So, um, Willie, to your point about the president changing his mind in real time, I take, mean, a, take this a look is at this. A backflip. Now, when you see the call, if you see it, I hope you see it, frankly, uh, you will find out that I did not do that at all. <laughs> On the whistleblower, you say you want the transcript of the call released. Do you also want the whistleblower? I didn't say that at all. Do you I didn't say that at all. Complaint? It may get released. I didn't say that at all. Now, when you see the call, if you see it, I hope you see it, frankly, uh, you will find out that I did not do that at all. So, Ed Luce, there obviously is a back and forth time and again. He, same thing, he, many times he said he hoped to release his tax returns. He never released his tax returns, of course. But getting to the bigger point about Mick Mulvaney uh, following orders to hold up arm, the arms transfer uh, to, that had already been appropriated by Congress. Um, Mika and I were hearing, I, you may have been hearing some of the same things from our sources, uh, that work in Eastern Europe, uh, that this money was being held up, the arms sales were being held up because Donald Trump wanted to dig up information uh, on Joe Biden was pressuring Ukraine to do that. That was back in August. Uh, the Financial Times and Washington Post also wrote about this possibility as well. Um, how, how serious uh, are those charges? Uh, should the Democrats move forward? Uh, what's the next step? Uh, those charges are deadly uh, serious. Um, uh, I don't think there are, there's any real precedent in American history for a president asking the leader of a foreign power, trying to extort the leader of a foreign power. A young, very pro-Western, very anti-corrupt, who was elected on an anti-corruption ticket, mind, um, Vladimir uh, Zelensky, <coughs> to, um, to dig up oppo research on his likely opponent. This just hasn't happened. We've had other um, sort of mal malefactions, but none on this scale. What's going to happen is a slightly different matter. I mean, Nancy Pelosi now has about 150 Democratic lawmakers saying they would like to move ahead with impeachment. She will, of course, need at least 218 um, for there to be um, you know, any mathematical sense in going forward. It seems like the tide you know, is swelling. Um, in that direction, mm -hmm. but that's still another 60 or 70 votes um, that are lacking. Clearly, mathematically, she cannot, as Speaker, call for a vote that she doesn't know she's going to win. And there are many, there are dozens of Democratic freshmen, you know, who are in who are in districts that Trump won in 2016, um, and who are obviously going to be prevaricating. I think a lot less than they were two, three days ago, but still prevaricating, you know, as to whether this would be an act of political suicide on their behalf. 
So, Ed, uh, could you help clear up one other thing for us? Because I think it bears repeating. We talked about it yesterday. The Wall Street Journal and Financial Times have reported it as well. But the Trump administration is hoping that Americans are so ignorant uh, that they actually believe the investigator was fired by Joe Biden because he was looking into a company that Biden's son was attached to. The reality, and if you can go into this a little bit, the reality is that the IMF and other Western leaders wanted this investigator fired in part because, critical point here, critical point, everybody, wait for it, Trump fans, because there was a concern he was not investigating that company and others aggressively enough. Yeah, that's absolutely right. The prosecutor in question, Victor Shokin, was notorious for getting, doing investigations on all kinds of people around Ukraine, then going to them and saying, look at this stuff I've got on you. What, what would you like me to do about it? And um, uh, um, benefiting in kind when he, when he didn't go ahead um, with prosecution. So it wasn't just Vice President Biden acting on Obama's instructions, um, asking for him to be removed as a pre condition for further IMF and international assistance to Ukraine. It was all the European yeah. leaders. It was Angela Merkel. It was then Theresa May. Uh, it was the European Union. This was not something Biden dreamt up on his own. It was um, a, a very, very necessary step to give money. If, if there's a leaking bucket, you right. want to mend that bucket <laughs> before you put more water into it. And Viktor Shokin was the leak. So, and this is just uh, want to point out um, one of the results of Trump's war on the media, calling it fake news and denigrating the value of the truth. You're going to have people now who think the wall has been built and Mexico's paying for it and are going to think there was something nefarious going on when there wasn't. I mean, this attack on the media is serious, and here's why. We're going to see it in real time. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.